Hello, this is Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes, and today I have a jewelry jar. Finally, after months of things being closed down and reopened and uh, getting used to new routines and things, I found a jewelry jar um, that I felt was worth purchasing. Uh, this jar was, oh, it's hard to see there. Um, let me see if I can find, there we go, $29.99, that's Canadian dollars, at uh, the Salvation Army, and I managed to pick it up two days after it was put in the store, because they put a date code on the uh, label. Um, so obviously this jar was speaking to me and not to anybody else. Uh, give me a chance to take a plastic off the top, um, and we'll see what we can find. Given the size of the the, the vase, so to speak. Um, I think it's going to take, well, at least three half hour videos to go through all of this stuff. So bear with me while I bring things back into position. So the first item on the top of the jar was this huge brass colored ring that comes apart, I haven't tried taking it apart, full of these pseudo keys. And looking at the symbols on the keys, I think these might be astrology symbols. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five. These are heavy, like a real key. Six, seven, um, well, these ones are different. These ones are black with white symbols. So like a knight's helm. Um, I don't know what that is. A, uh, a Templar cross. or so a couple of Templar crosses. So that's 4 is 11. Uh, 12. There's like a shark. I don't know. 13. And then some more of these, uh, I think, astrologies. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, maybe? Or I might have I might have miscounted because there's so many of them. But this is heavy. And I don't know. Is this for playing a game? Obviously, these were put on here so that you could open it up and take them off. Anyway, if you have any idea what these are um, or what kind of collection it goes with or game it goes with, let me know. Um, I'd be happy to pass it on to uh, a, a game player or find a collector who would use them. I bet if I asked one of my uh, grandkids, they would know. But maybe not. Anyway, that <laughs> no, I don't know why. I mean, if it was a collectible, you would think that the store could package it up and sell it separately. But I guess they're, they didn't want to wait that long. Okay, now what else? Okay, this is... Oh, it's not another key, but it kind of looked like it could have been. Here's a an earring, a pierced earring, um, gold tone, with uh, some interesting um, wrapped, um, wire wrapped beads, and this very interesting sort of 3D s twisted spiral. I like that. Um, too long for me to wear. I, it's, not, it's not a style I would wear, but great repurposable pieces. I don't see the other one out of the top of the jar, but we'll put it aside. Who knows what we're going to find. Everything's been interesting so far. This is uh, heavy. It's It clicks, but not as sharply as glass. These are uh, molded skull beads. I'm um, sure so somebody would find an interest in them. It's a stretchy bracelet. It's got a good stretch. Um, they feel like a type of ceramic. Um, they're too heavy for plastic. But they don't really... They don't really sound like glass or stone. So that'll go in the... To be re-gifted or... Repurposed pile. Here's another stretchy bracelet. This one's almost stretched out. Little plastic beads. Kind of trying to look like... Uh, cat size but not quite making the grade oh first watch um, put this the right way up it says let's see if we can focus in a little bit I'm never very good at this 
says, looks like it says Traditions Quartz. Oops, sorry. Back to normal. Um, serial numbers, base metal, stainless steel, back, Japan movement. Nice looking watch. Um, I like to see all the numbers on my watch, but it's an excellent shape. Like the, the back of the band has no corrosion, so it's, uh, it wasn't worn much. Um, might be worth seeing if it'll run with the battery. Usually that's all that's uh, the matter with most of these watches. And the fact that everybody has a, a smartphone or a, you know, a cell phone with the time on it who needs to wear a watch these days or, or people are wearing their, uh, their fitness watches, um, which tell you the time and heartbeat and how many steps you've walked. So put that in the watch pile. And here's another watch. Wow. So, uh, oh, there's something on the back. Anyway, uh, you could feel it. So this is uh, a shiny, coppery watch. Looks, doesn't look scratched. Doesn't, looks like it's in excellent shape. Um, there is a clasp. I just haven't figured out how to get it undone. Right there. Okay. Oh, from this side, G. Anyway, oh, won't take the time. So, it's got dials for seconds, 24-hour um, clock. Not sure what that other dial's for. It's not running, so it probably needs a battery. It's got all kinds of little options here. Oh, and it's, I said it, it had something on the back. It's still got the plastic on the back that keeps it from getting um, scratched and you can see it says Claire so a fashion watch um, I guess a woman might w or a man could wear it um, it's a little flashy um, for most men I know but some guys could put a, pull it off it's big for a woman you can imagine how and it's heavy so watch number two I probably won't try to put a battery in that unless I can find somebody I know who would like to wear it. Ooh, look at this. Oh, this is pretty. It makes me think of summer. Get this one out of the road. Um, nice statement next. Look at the that sort of buttery yellow and the fastening and there's like a shimmer in it as well. So really pretty and excellent shape. Turn it over. Um, oh, really well connected. I find some of the statement necklaces, these, it's this part here, or the connections that are not very well done, but those have got substantial rings and nice closure. So reasonably made. Um, lobster claw clasp with a little dangle. It's in, uh, no markings that I can see. So very nice statement piece. Be beautiful uh, in the summer. Um, I guess you could have the, with the right earrings. You could wear it uh, with a, a solid colored dress um, when there's lots of candlelight or bright lights where it would shimmer. That's pretty. So quite the contrast in what we're finding here today. Here's a pair of earrings. Um, Clip back earrings, well worn. Um, no text, no markings that I can see. And uh, pretty scuffed. So they've been well loved or they've been uh, tumbled around in a jewelry box for a long time. So those, I don't know, maybe you could repurpose them. If you were a dollhouse maker, these would make this nice uh, seats for a pair of stools uh, at a coffee bar or a, in a, you know, a breakfast nook. Um, I recently uh, helped finish a, a 112 scale dollhouse for my granddaughter and the uh, dollhouse, the miniature dollhouse groups on Facebook are amazing what they repurpose. So there's some dollhouse stools, if nothing else. Here's a little something. Scotch thistle. 
pretty dark colored. Uh, looks like it broke off. Something broke off here. Um, no markings. Don't know if it's silver or if it would shine up. Just a second while I grab uh, a cleaning tool. So you may have heard me talk about these in other videos. This is a uh, gel nail file. It has um, seven levels of grit, like so six is a nail buffer, seven is polish and shine, one uh, coarse grit. I'm just going to open up, so since this is a brand new one, bear with me. These you get at the dollar store. Um, usually I take the the one, two, three sides off um, so that they don't scratch up jewelry. But six and seven, there it is. Okay. Six and seven are really good to see uh, if you can polish something up. So I'm going to go with the end here because it's sort of flat and just run the number seven side on it. You can tell it's like look at the difference and you can see look at the black that came off so um, I don't have a test kit they've been out of stock on Amazon for since January at least the one that I would be willing to purchase so um, I'll put this in my to be tested pile but even if it's not silver this is shining up nicely with the uh, with the gel nail file, so a cute little piece, uh, easily repurposed, and you got to see what a gel nail file is good for. You can also use um, a pencil eraser. You know, one of those uh, those pink erasers um, that you used in grade school. Um, especially if it's a piece of silver, it takes the tarnish off very nicely without uh, harming the the piece. So it's a it's a a way of uh, checking to see if there might be silver under there. So that goes in my little precious pile off to the side. Um, but not with the single earrings. Okay. Um, another single earring. This is quite lovely. Brush gold. Wow. It's an excellent shade. It's quite beautiful. Um, I don't see markings of any kind. Hmm, it would be nice if there were a pair of those. I could see somebody enjoying wearing those. Two single earrings. What's this? Oh, a couple different things. So, another single earring. This is very lightweight metal. I doubt if it's even aluminum. By the, it's not, not very crisp in terms of the casting. And the bead, probably just plastic. It's not cold at all, so it, not probably not glass. This is very heavy. Heavy wire, but... Um, you know, costume, simple costume earring in excellent shape. And here's the other piece that came up with it. Is there got to be, oh, it's just like a faceted ball. So, um, a little ring. You'd need, a, I'd need a few of them for it even to show up on my, on my fingers. But, uh, in good shape. Not sure what to do with that. Oh, okay. This fits in there. It looks like this is a uh, a bezel. Very p poorly cast, so inexpensively cast. Um, there should be something in there, a picture or something. And here's the glass or the plastic that goes on top of it. So that could be. Uh, Reuse this would uh, this is the kind of thing you use in a dollhouse as a picture frame. You just sort of you know get rid of the little um, loops at the top, or you put a bow up there or, or something, or um, put a handle on it, turn it into a, uh, a mirror. So that'll go in my uh, repurposed pile with the uh, with the earrings that would make good seats. Whoa. My camera's not drunk, it's just I'm not used to uh, 
the stand. So here's a pair of uh, clip-on earrings. They go this way. Um, lots of nice blue, white, and a few black beads. It's uh, have to check them more carefully to see if everything's there. Let's see. Oh, there's kind of a spot here that's missing something, but it's hard to tell if you, I mean, maybe you can tell, but it's hard to tell. Let's see. Backs are well uh, patinaed, and it does say, can we focus in on, whoops, Japan. So it's a pair of vintage uh, bead earrings made in Japan. They fit, they're plastic, they're not glass, so they'd be quite lightweight to wear. So those uh, I'll put with my collection of vintage earrings. Very nice. Okay. Here is a brass ring with no opening. And what looks like a Christmas decoration, but it's a, a faux pearl with a rondelle and a hoop on a loop. Any idea what you'd use this for? Yeah. I can't think of anything. Let me know. Oh, I see something that's shedding pieces. Let me see if I can problem when stuff gets put into a jewelry jar is you you never know if it was complete to begin with so here's a feels like a glass bead and a bugle bead on a uh, an eye pin here's a very light uh, weight necklace and so that piece obviously came off here these are like upside down hearts or petals they're very lightweight plastic they're kind of um, shaped as if you and if you put to do two together you'd have like a puffy heart but there are um, so you can see a few have fallen off it needs to get uh, put back together and some kinks taken out um, oh says something on here let's see if we've might have to um, Maybe if we just go back to normal. Okay, how be if I do it this way with my hands? There you go. M dot West Germany or M J West Germany. Oh, look at my dirty fingernails. Oh, dear. And I washed my hands this morning. Apologize for that. Let me focus again. So, this is a vintage West German necklace. It's so lightweight that um, like it doesn't feel like the kind of thing that you would rush out and wear, but I guess on the right person or the right situation, it would be pretty. It's very dainty. I, I don't know if enough of the pieces are here to repair it totally, but uh, an interesting find from West Germany. The plastic would be 30 years old. So uh, we'll have to see how long that plastic lasts. There are some other interesting things. Now this is tiny. This has got to be one of the tiniest ball chains I've ever seen. It's very short. It's not long enough to be a uh, bracelet except perhaps on a child but the clasp and everything's there and it's an excellent shape so there's another piece to be repurposed I'm going to put it back on the center of this back here away from the uh, bright sun okay there's a handsome hand uh, an evil eye um, some I don't know what symbol that is on there, but a uh, little, like, coins. And some more evil eyes. I don't know if I can focus on those coins or not. 
I, I can't tell you what those are. So some nice fire polish beads on the outside edge. Little uh, silver tone spacers. I don't know if uh, if these are silver and will shine up or not. Looks they look a little yellowy in the maybe a bit. I don't know. Anyway, it's a, a well constructed bracelet. It'll be sturdy. Um, oh, I see a little bit of verdigris on the lobster claw. That'll have to get cleaned. Put that uh, separate from other things. I always hate seeing a little bit of green on stuff. You never know when it's going to travel. And here is, uh, well, all I can say, it was well loved or else it's been uh, through the wars, as we used to say. Most of the uh, finishes off the beads. Very lightweight, almost I mean it yeah feels like it almost feels like plastic it's probably a very lightweight metal but uh, uh, I don't see anything worth doing with this maybe save the clasp for something the toggle clasp unless you were to repaint the beads which I don't think it's worth it um, on a single earring I don't know if I see oh no a pair always nice when pairs come out of the top of the jar pair of uh, well-tarnished, well-worn uh, gold tone earrings, a uh, uh, wreath shape with a uh, uh, tassel, pierced, um, probably take, worth taking apart for reusing the components. I could see this being the base of a lamp in a dollhouse. I'm kind of dollhouse uh, obsessed right now. Um, yeah, put those off to the side. Definitely needing uh, to go with that uh, bracelet. Here's a piece that um, unfortunately is broken. I have the uh, the part of the glass. This was uh, this is a puffed glass heart. Lovely purple uh, and white swirls. It was on this chain, but when it tumbled out, it uh, got broken. So um, it's pretty. I'd like to do something with it. This cord's not. It's just you know, faux leather. Uh, nothing special. So I'll uh, since I have the piece that came off here, um, I may glue it back on, or I may. It could be. Uh, something else done at the top there to repurpose that piece here's uh, oh it's not stretchy it's a slightly adjustable bracelet these feel like a light almost like polymer clay they're not wood at least they don't feel like wood they have they um, I don't know how you would what you would tap it with to see if it was wood Well, maybe. I don't think it really sounds like wood. Um, black beads, textured beads, and it says Cuba. So a souvenir bracelet in excellent shape. Um, someone might like that just uh, for the design of the bracelet. Oh, okay. Oh, this is two things. I thought it was... Uh, so here's this another uh, fish hook earring or fish wire earring, uh, Celtic knot, a little uh, wound wire bead at the bottom. One of those. We'll put that in a single earring pile, and a textured silver tone ring, again like that other gold tone ring I saw. Um, oh, another little dangle to go with the West German. Um, necklace there we go another single earring this is kind of crudely made at the this section the bottom is smoother um, not marked plastic um, I, I nothing wrong with that I mean it, it a, a pair would they would be nice worn nobody would notice the the finer details. Put that off to the sides. Maybe we'll find a, a, its match. 
on other stretchy bracelet, pink beads. We'll put that in the kids' pile for kids to play with. I think this is like a collar button. I'm nice, nice color on the back, kind of a coppery gold. Um, no markings, well worn on the front, so you wouldn't. I don't know if that'll clean up or not. Let's see if we give it a little rub here. Mm, yeah, it's cleaning up. Oh, okay, that's good. Hey. So that's better that some of the blacks come off of it. I have to look up what those are actually called. Um, oh, another ring. Oh, this is just, uh, what kind do you call that metal? Base metal? Um, ring, no markings. Looks like it hasn't been worn. It looks like one of those things that might turn your finger green very quickly. Put it with the other rings. This, okay, this is an earring. All right, this is a little strange. It's kind of gold tone on the top and silver tone on the bottom. So I don't know if, and like the, the connector rings are a brass color, so I don't know if the, the color wore off or if somebody put it together. Certainly these, you can take these wooden beads off and repurpose those. Again, only one of them. Um, oh, a necklace. Oh, this is pretty. Here's a, a tag that says AK. Lobster claw clasp. I don't see any markings. So this is a, a short necklace with um, blue faceted beads, they feel plastic, and a purpley faceted pearl, and a clearish, you know, meant to look like fire polished bead. So a nice pretty little short necklace. So probably a, you know, a petite person or a teenager would uh, wear that. You could wear the t-shirt and it uh, just dress things up nicely. I'm not sure that AK doesn't look like and Klein quality, so I don't know if AK stands uh, it represents another another uh, manufacturer. Well, this is a nice design. It's like a hard plastic. I don't think it's a glass. I think it's a plastic. It's not too heavy, but nice frame profile woman's profile with the swirling hair. And uh, a little bit older because it's got the spring ring clasp. Oh, and it is marked on the back. Let's see if we can focus in. I can see the word Canada down there. Oh, wow! This is a Sarah Coventry piece. I collect Sarah Coventry. I wouldn't have known this was Sarah Coventry at all. It, uh, there isn't a book of Sarah Coventry Canadian designs. Um, Sarah Coventry was produced mostly in the U.S., but also in Great Britain, in Australia, and in Canada. And they had, um, we haven't come across many catalogs for just Canadian sales, but there's a great wealth of information uh, in the Facebook groups that help identify pieces. So I'll have to photograph this one, add it to my collection, and see if anybody can identify what, uh, the name and year of this piece is. Oh yay, this is, makes, my, makes my day, makes my jar even more worthwhile. Oh, this is pretty. Now, what is this, a shooting star amid clouds? Or clouds and is that a mountain? Or is it just a background design to make the star stand out, gold tone? Um, I don't know if it's painted and then uh, like a clear enamel put on top. Not marked. Um, I think that's just a little divot, yeah. Well, that's pretty. Um, see if I know anybody who collects heart pins. Wow. So we're getting to 30 minutes. I've got a few, three... pieces left. Let's see what we've got here. 
um, a pewter looking. I don't think this is pewter metal. It's kind of light weight for pewter. So probably a base metal just with a finish to make it look like pewter and a lovely pink rhinestone on each side. Just uh, give it the right chain and that would be very, very wearable. So a nice cross, a black, well, no, not quite a black ring. Oh, this is changing color as I hold it. There's got to be, it's got to be a mood ring. You can, can you see it says Florida there? Yeah, look how blue it's gotten now that I'm holding it. And it's got dolphins jumping around. And it's going blue. It's a, it's in really good shape. It's, I don't know if that's aluminum. It's certainly not marked inside, but uh, a nice little Florida souvenir. So we've been to Cuba. We've been to Florida. We got stuff from Germany, Japan. This is uh, Travel Around the World Day with jewelry. Um, what have we got here? This is obviously multi-strand. So let's um, separate from other things. Here is a... I said obviously multi-strand, but I can't seem to get it. Oh, okay. There we go. There you go. So multi-strand silver tone necklace with all these little tiny discs on it. Um, extender lobster claw clasp. Not very long. Um, but in excellent shape. Very wearable. Put that with uh, the wearable necklaces. Uh, we saw that one already with the pearls and the, I must have picked it up, pearls and the, the faceted beads. So this is our last piece. This is, uh, um, I guess what you call a fringe necklace. Uh, not everything's in the right, this one doesn't want to cooperate. Some of them need to probably be fixed. I can't tell if there's any pieces missing. You'd have to kind of lay it out and go along and see. So a lovely sort of mossy green um, fringes made out of bugle beads, um, sort of a gunmetal, the darker black chain, um, a ball dangle at the end, and a lobster claw clasp that's working. Sometimes these aren't working, that's why I like to check. So there's um, another probably wearable necklace it's not my style I would I, I it would look sort of funny on me I need a little bit of chunkier pieces but um, be nice uh, again on a uh, someone who has a slim neck or a teenage look or the pieces could certainly be repurposed so thank you for joining me today on this new foray uh, uh, or this return to jewelry jars um, my best piece so far today was the Sarah Coventry piece that I collect. This little bit of uh, Scotch thistle is interesting. And that uh, West Germany necklace would be interesting to uh, see if I can put it all back together with all the pieces.